Hey everybody, Larry Berman here. Late, late, late Friday night. Um, little bit of R and R trip. We're driving. My wife and I are driving down to Florida uh, for a couple months, actually, and I'll fly back and forth from time to time to get some some business done. But uh, after three back surgeries in the last two months, I need some warm weather. So, you know, Friday was spent in a car, and you know, I had one eye on. Um, uh, on the uh, Bloomberg terminal and one eye on the interstate. Uh, it wasn't quite like that, though. Um, let's uh, take a dive into the chart room and see what we learned this week. So on the economic uh, data front, uh, a couple of uh, big numbers came out on Friday. Personal consumption expenditure deflator. So this core measure here is the Fed's bogey. And, you know, down down from previous month um, and, you know, as expected relative to uh, consensus of the survey they do of economists on the street. So, you know, market like that, those. And then at uh, 10 o'clock, the consumer sentiment survey that University of Michigan does, slight uptick here, new questions they started asking in recent years about inflation expectations one year out and, and long term. And those both ticked lower from last month and, and a bit better than expected. So now that really was a catalyst for the markets, you know, keeping a bit of a tone today. But as all will know, uh, in the last few minutes, we got a little bit of selling. So when we look at the, the NASDAQ, remember, you always got to look at the leadership of the market. You know, what, what was leading going up, what was leading coming down, and is that behavior changing? Okay, so obviously liquidity bubble post-COVID, stay at home, everything was technology, and that really drove the markets. And then, of course, as the flip side of that started to happen, the Fed starts tightening, liquidity comes out, NASDAQ leads on, on the way down, and all will know that it was a very, very bad year for the NASDAQ. We said in recent weeks, we think before this correction phase is over, we need to get back to where the bubble started. So one could argue that the beginning of COVID and the pre-COVID period here, this range is psychologically very, very important. And I think, and I think we need to, um, uh, we need to test that before it's over. Now, in the last few weeks here, in the last few weeks here, we've got this new base developing, and it looks like we're coming out of this bearish trend channel. And if we blow this up, you can see that on Thursday and Friday, you know, we've taken out the 200-day average. Now, again, looking at this channel, we got up to the top end of that. Maybe that was the catalyst for a little profit taking. Um, when, when you look at a chart like this and you see that change, you want to dig deeper. You want to look at what's driving it. And so, you know, you, you, let's go year to date. NASDAQ's up 11.26%. You can see it there. If you look at the weighting, everyone will know Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, you know, the, the top five or six stocks represent, you know, half the index. Tesla and NVIDIA. If you look at um, where the performances come year to date. So uh, big name Tesla, NVIDIA, those two together, you know, up an average of say 40 odd percent seven eight percent of the index together you know you're looking at a third of the move you know two stocks and you know when so when it gets to the bull and bear pick of the week do you want to trade the strength and momentum are you that kind of trader does this look like a breakout or are we going to see some resistance here so i would argue for resistance and so caution overall on the big tech names um, especially the ones that have been ripping higher this year. And if you want to stick with the NASDAQ in terms of a buy, one of the names I really, really like is Enphase Energy. Now, a few weeks ago, I didn't like it at all. 
Uh, risk reward is always very important to me. When I'm looking at my charts and my setup, I'm always looking at what the analysts think it's going to be worth, you know, one year from now, the forward base consensus price target. And for the last few months, the stock's trading above its price target. The risk reward is lousy. If you look at a name that's breaking out like that, it's it's actually rare that it keeps going way ahead of consensus earnings. It happens, but it's rare. So if you look at some of those other names and you see where, where are their price targets and all that, you can see the risk reward is actually not very attractive. So, you know, where do you like the clean energy play and, and the semiconductors around clean energy? And, you know, so I, I, I'd be looking to short NVIDIA right now and go long end phase as a Paris trade. Have a great week, everyone.